Hey guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on uh, the REPL and um, how Lisp processes lists. And if you didn't know, Lisp actually stands for list processing. So the general concept in Lisp is to process lists. Um, but we'll talk more about that. that. That's not hugely important. But um, today we're going to talk mostly about the syntax of Lisp and how it reads things. Now the REPL, which is our first topic, is uh, it's how Common Lisp takes the code you type and turns it into the things you want it to do. Um, it's not, I don't think it's technically a compiler, it's not really technically an interpreter, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, I hope I don't make anyone mad by saying that if they're diehard fans and think it's a compiler or whatever, I don't know. I think it's a, it's a mixed subject, but it basically just it evaluates your code and turns it into things you want it to do. So that's what the REPL does. And REPL actually stands for read, eval, print, loop. Uh, and this over here is the REPL. Uh, just in case you were wondering, I'm going to be typing notes over here and I'm going to be actually showing you the code over here. But um, this is the REPL. What it does is it reads in tokens. So we'll type something at the, the REPL and we'll hint to enter. And what it does is it reads in this. It tries to evaluate it and then it prints out a result. But in this case, uh, you can't you can't read it because it's not a real thing and that has no value and it doesn't know what to do. So, um, but <laughs> that's uh, that's that doesn't matter. So, um, and then this is the loop part where it comes back and asks you for more things to read. So that's this is the REPL um, command line version essentially. But uh, the REPL it also the REPL is also what's used to read in like Lisp um, files that you've written, um, it, it will read everything in first and then it will um, evaluate all those things and then it will print out a result. And then it'll loop and try and evaluate things for you again. So um, that's the basics of uh, Lisp. Now let's talk more about each step individually so you can kind of get a feel for the syntax of Lisp and the way it runs and how it works. So it'll make a lot, it'll make the language a lot easier to understand because Common Lisp is just completely different at the core, in my opinion. If you're coming from C style languages, which I'm assuming you are, because most languages are C style, like Java C style, PHP C style, JavaScript C style, Prince or uh, print, Python's uh, C style, uh, at least I would say it is. Um, so if you're coming from any of those languages or pretty much any language you've ever learned, um, they probably don't have Lisp's syntax. So it's going to be very different at first, but it makes sense. In my opinion, it's simpler. There's less rules to remember. It has a, a set format that you have to follow. Um, at least in most cases, there are exceptions, but most of the time there's a set syntax. So it's, it's easier in my opinion. So the first step is the read step. What the read step does is it um, takes in tokens from the user, uh, from the user and turns them into uh, valid S expressions. Um, now that might, that definition might not make a whole lot of sense to you because what is an X expression? What is a valid S expression? What is an invalid S expression? Well, um, S expressions can be one of two things, or it can be, I guess it can be both of those two things. It can either be uh, an atom, uh, which is either a, uh, you know, uh, they're literals, which are, um, you know, a string or, a, you know, a number. Anything that evaluates to itself is a literal. So, you know, string evaluates to string and three evaluates to three, it can't be anything else. Uh, or an atom could also be uh, a symbol. And a symbol um, is common Lisp's version of um, variables. Also, they rep symbols represent uh, function names um, and they also represent macro names. So um, symbol is, a, is basically a general purpose way of referencing data. So it's either referencing uh, you know, a literal such as this or it's referencing a function, or it's referencing a macro, which I'll explain the difference, differences between function and macro functions and macros later. But um, for right now, just know that it, it stands for these three things. So, um, and those are the two things an atom can be. Um, but the other thing that can be an S expression is uh, any list. And a list is um, any space delimited atoms between parentheses. So say we have, for an example, for a general example, A1, A2, A3. So you have three atoms named A1, A2, and A3, and you have them between parentheses. That makes this a list. So, um, but if we're gonna do like things that are real things, 
say we had, um, you know, we have a string and then we have the number three and then we have a function or a symbol um, plus because plus is a, a function within Lisp. Um, it gets its own name plus. So this, this is technically speaking, these are, this is a valid list and these are all valid atoms. And uh, the reading section turns them into S expressions, which is something that um, the evaluator can understand. Now the evaluator, um, the, which is what the eval stage is of the REPL, the evaluator takes in these S expressions and tries to do something with them, but it does that in a very specific way. Um, it, what the evaluate does is it, it looks at the first elements uh, of every list um, in the S expressions and tries to evaluate um, it, evaluate it as either a function name or macro name. Um, and then what it does after that is once it decides whether or not it's a valid function or macro, um, it then looks at each subsequent um, atom in that list, then looks at each um, following atom in the list and evaluates them as uh, arguments to the function or macro. So um, for an example, uh, if we have, um, we're gonna use plus as an example function. If we have uh, something like this, where we have a list that contains the atoms plus two and three in that order, um, what it'll do is it'll look at this and it'll say, okay, we have a list. What we do with lists, we look at the first element, and the first element in this list is the plus symbol. Now, the plus symbol is a valid function, um, so it says, okay, now start evaluate, evaluating the following arguments. So it looks at two, and it says, okay, two evaluates to two, three evaluates to three, we put those in the plus function, and it gives us a result of uh, well, five. Um, and now I'll just show you over here that that actually would work. So two plus two, three, and would give us five. But um, for example, let's try a little bit more of a complicated um, series of things to add together. So in this case, we're gonna put a nested list in here. So uh, atoms can also, or the elements can also be lists. So I guess um, looks at each following atom slash list, I suppose. Um, and uh, so there can also be lists and uh, the way it would look at this is it would say, okay, so we have a list. Uh, what's the first symbol or first S expression within the list? And it's a plus symbol. Um, and then it says, okay, well, what's the next argument? Because we know this is legit. So it goes this and says, okay, we have another list. So what do we do with lists? We look at the first element. Uh, the first element is a plus symbol. So that's a valid function. Uh, and then it looks at the next thing and it says, okay, this is two, it evaluates to two, so it's two. This is three, because it evaluates three. And then it essentially returns that list um, so that as far as the computer is concerned, this is what is now in that surrounding list. So it, each list returns a value. Um, so each list can be evaluated on its own. So um, it returns the value five, and then five says, okay, well, five is five, so it evaluates to five. And three is three, it evaluates to three and then it would give us a result of eight. So we would get eight out of that. And just an example, I'll, or just to show, I'll, I'll do it over here too. So we'll do, um, oh shit, crap. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I made an error. Um, <laughs> so we'll look at, um, we'll have a nested list. Um, we'll, we'll just type the same thing I put over there. So three, and it'll print out eight. Um, so that's how it would look at lists. Uh, for example, if we tried to put something that wasn't a valid symbol as the first character, or first atom, or S expression, what it would do is give us an error. So, you know, if we put string and then three and then plus, like I put up top there as an example, it would say string is not a function name, try using a symbol. Um, so that's um, kind of, as you can see, it looks at the first thing as if, as if it's a function. It tries to evaluate it as a function. If it can't, it's going to break out and essentially just stop working. So just like most rules, this one has exceptions. Um, whereas this is how most functions will be evaluated, this is not how um, some things are evaluated. Uh, so I'll just put an exceptions section here. Um, so 
macros are um, evaluated differently. They um, tech, you don't really know need to know too much about macros right now. Um, like I said, it's a topic for a later tutorial. This tutorial is long enough already, but um, basically macros, they define their own um, syntax. So um, it might not necessarily, uh, it, it will always look at the first symbol and say, okay, this is a macro, but the rest of the things um, that are in the list, it might not necessarily evaluate them in order. Um, so that's also important, may or may not evaluate all of the um, arguments or s expressions. I'll say s expressions. Um, so macros are just a little bit different in that sense. Um, they they won't always follow this exact syntax, and that's what I meant earlier when I said that common Lisp is a lot simpler in my opinion because most things will follow this syntax. You put the function at the beginning, and then you have um, arguments after that. Um, but Macros are slightly different, and then also if you have a variable, um, technically speaking, uh, you can't you couldn't do something like this. So say we had a variable x, um, you couldn't if you wanted to print out x, you couldn't do this because um, it would give you an error. It it expects um, undefined function s. Yeah, so it expects um, x to be a function because you put it within a list. So as soon as it again as soon as it looks at a list, it says, okay, what is the first element? Is it a is it a valid function? In this case, x is not a valid function. So, but if we had um, a variable x um, and we wanted to print it out, we could do this without any lists or anything. You could just type the, the variable you want to print or the, the, the symbol of the variable that you want to print and without any parentheses. And if you hit enter and x was actually a variable, it would um, print out the value. But as you see, it says variable x has no value. So, um, but yeah, those are two exceptions to the rule. Um, so it will look at variables and just print them out immediately, which is kind of nice. Um, but that brings us to our next section, which is the print section. So uh, the print um, part of the, the process, basically all it does is it uh, prints um, to uh, standard, I think it's standard output, I'll just say prints uh, <laughs> the last value um, that was returned uh, during evaluation. Uh, so whatever the last uh, list returns gets printed. So uh, in the case of this function or this uh, list right here, um, it didn't print out five, uh, even though this list um, was evaluated. So it you this got evaluated but didn't print, and then it evaluated this list, and then it, there were no more lists to evaluate. So it printed out this value to uh, the REPL. Uh, in the same case with this, it. it it printed the last thing that was returned uh, to the REPL, it printed five. Um, and later on, when we when I show you other functions and stuff, uh, it'll you'll see what, what I mean by that. So um, don't worry too much if that doesn't make sense, but that I think that part's pretty straightforward. And then uh, loop also I hope is pretty straightforward because it just you know loops around, goes back to to the read um, portion. So it just looks for more tokens to read in, essentially. It waits for you to give it more tokens. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of the basics of the syntax behind uh, Common Lisp. Um, now that we've gotten this out of the way, I think I can move forward and try to explain, explain things. Uh, like I said, it's very different um, than most languages. There's no semicolons. There's a lot of lists. Um, again, it's list processing. The, the language itself just processes lists. So, um, but it does them in a very helpful way and it does them in a way that um, is very powerful. Um, like I said, we'll talk about macros later and macros are really cool because what they can do is they can essentially write code for you. Macros write code based off of variables, which is kind of interesting. It's, uh, it's very helpful for uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and things like that. So Common Lisp is uh, known for being good for that kind of application. But anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and um, I'll be back with another one soon, hopefully.